welcome to our channel. I hope you're doing really well. In this video, we're going to talk about and show you what happens when we took our Land Cruiser four-wheel drive onto Fraser Island. Yeah, we did it a bit differently from the folk who normally go via Inskip Point. That's right. We went via Harvey Bay. And anyway, in this video, we'll show you the fantastic campsite on the mainland before we left, which is just down the road from the barge. But it comes with a little bit of a nasty catch. A bit nasty. Yeah. Uh, we take the barge from River's End uh, on the way to Kingfisher Bay and enjoy the amazing scenery along the way. It was beautiful. And then we'll show you what it's like to stay at Kingfisher Bay Resort. There's dining, activities, beautiful general store, and of course, some great bars. We take a four-wheel drive track to beautiful Lake Mackenzie and experience holiday crowds like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely. Then we go camping. We get stuck on the track, we take a wrong turn, um, and then we end up uh, driving on the beach at high tide. Pretty tricky. All hell broke loose. Mm, absolutely. Also, we'll share with you what went wrong during the night while we're staying in a gingo, a dingo. Dingo? A gingo or a dingo hotspot. <laughs> yeah, clambering around in my undies at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, yeah, that was something else. Absolutely. And finally, we're going to give you our honest thoughts on what it's like to stay, visit, and camp on this national heritage place? Yeah, look, it's beautiful, but there's just a couple of things that we'll share with you at the end of this video. Let's get straight to it. Just down the road from Harvey Bay in Rivers Head is the Fraser Coast RV Park. Very, very quirky place. It has fantastic facilities, camp kitchen, everything is, have, has great rustic charm. It really is brilliant. We've got the fish Colour. cooking. Yes. It's warm here. It's warm? <laughs> it's, it's very warm, but, but it's very pleasant. Great facilities. Yes. Look at this camp kitchen. It's amazing. We've got some, they're barramundi, right? Yes. Cooking away. Barramundi. And the facilities here are incredible. There's a beautiful sink. There's all the games you could possibly want to play, microwave. Great fridge, everything's for everybody to use. What I really liked was the showers. Um, they were amazing. They oh, yeah, just so quirky and just, yeah, brilliant. Clean and just wonderful. And the, the reason we stayed there is we watched a, a, a video and mm. saw a review. Mm. And, um, and just because it was down the road from the ferry, we thought that would be very convenient. Absolutely. And the owners were delightful and very helpful. But like absolute idiots, we set up our campsite amongst the bushes. Ah, uh, yeah. Grave mistake. Suddenly, we found there was all these little tiny dots biting us. Absolutely. We had no idea, but we did then work out that they were midges. We've had no experience with them, and we really didn't know how to deal with them. It's warm. I'm wearing long sleeves because of the midges. But sitting here drinking a unauthorised beverage, a Diet Coke, and loving it. This is great. But we bought, we bought some uh, good riddance. Uh, we put that on and it, um, maybe we put it on a bit late because it didn't work. Absolutely, no. We did get some relief from the Bushman's repellent, but it sort of wore off quite quickly. We actually ended up moving camp and then realised that, you know, that was probably better not to be sitting under trees and amongst bushes. Anyway, apparently the thing that really works is a mixture of baby oil and Dettol. Yeah, we weren't sure about that. Bit of an old wives' tale, perhaps. And anyway, we didn't have those things on us. Uh, anyway, we were left with all these bite marks and it looked like we had a case of medieval pox. <laughs> it was everywhere. Anyway, would you come back, Christine? Absolutely. We'd just be prepared. It was, it was beautiful. It really was. It was a beautiful campsite. So, yep, definitely. Maybe someone can share their experience in how to deal with these midges and that might help us next time around. Absolutely. So in the morning, we shot straight down to the ferry terminal. Well, it's really a ramp. Mm. And it's located where the Mary River joins the Great Sandy Strait. And we started to get a real sense of the beauty of the area and the dangers. And because we were newbies to driving on sand, we thought this would be a really good introduction uh, to uh, get over to Fraser on the tarmac mm. and not have to worry about um, tire pressures until we got over to the island. Yeah, not worrying about that just yet. 
Um, but there were a lot of um, international tourists, uh, day trippers, uh, organised tours, all boarding the, uh, the barge with us and an amazing sense of excitement. And the journey to Kingfisher Bay was magic. As we started to approach Fraser Island, we began to appreciate how rugged the place actually is. We've made it. We're at Kingfisher Bay. We're about to disembark the board. Oh the my gosh, watch out. And we're going see. down the ramp. Oh no. Hang on, and then we're driving down the pier. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> we're on the island. And I can tell you, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, Tim kept telling me that we're just staying in this kind of simple hotel. Yeah, I remember when it was built in the early 90s and it was presented as this kind of eco tourism resort, but it really delivers on that and it still looks good to this day. Absolutely. It's set amongst a series of natural lagoons and it's teeming with life. And our room was bright and airy and we had a view of the uh, lagoon as well. So all the rooms point out or are directed towards the lagoon. It was just fantastic and had air conditioning, which is really nice. Got to have that. Yeah. And around the resort, there's these various tracks and trails and there's wildlife everywhere. Birds were, were nuts. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Super noisy, in fact. What can you hear, Tim? Well, there's birds over there. There's uh, a scorpion on your foot. Oh, <laughs> very funny. You made me look. <laughs> and there's dingoes everywhere. Oh, stop it. Move on, move on. Thank you. Oh, and there's a great general store and a really good information centre. And Kingfisher Bay itself, uh, it's bloody beautiful. <laughs> we spent ages exploring the tidal flats and then we discovered the Sunset Bar right on the beach. Nothing better than enjoying a beverage on the beach when you're on holidays. Absolutely. Um, also, don't forget there was a great bistro there. We had breakfast and a couple of dinners and it really was great. I, I really enjoyed the night walk with yeah. the rangers where they pointed out all the various critters, critters that were living around the resort. Just crazy. Yeah, it was insane. We saw this, what was it, an electric light lit up like frog. fluorescent frog, frog and a scorpion. It was, yeah. yeah, and a sea turtle. turtle. And of course, oh, well, not of course, but luckily we saw a dingo as well. They're very scrawny, but um, yeah, that's apparently their physique and that's how they look. We saw a dingo. Yeah, we saw a dingo. It was good. Very quickly, if you're enjoying this video, smash us a like or go the whole hog and subscribe. Helps the channel and we'd appreciate it. So the next day we thought we would check out Lake Mackenzie, but you told me it was on a made road. Did I? I said the main <laughs> road, the main road out, but it, it, it is a four wheel drive track. Yeah, but it was completely unexpected. I have to admit, uh, we both had to adapt uh, very, very quickly to the conditions because it hadn't rained for a long time and uh, the, there was loose sand on the tracks and you took your eye off the ball for a second and you were bogged to pussy's bow. Yeah, it could happen very easily. There it is, Lake Mackenzie. What are we doing, Tim? I've got no idea. <laughs> Look where we are, hang on, I've got to put a bit of throttle in here. Yeah, they get stuck. But we finally made it but the place was packed. But worth it because look at the view. The view was fantastic. It was absolutely amazing. Mm. But the water, it's so crystal clear. Put your head under though and your eyes sting because of the pH value. Yeah, it was very unexpected, but you know, it's so interesting to visit such a fantastic, like it's in the middle of Fraser Island. So to visit such a wilderness area was amazing. It's an amazing example of nature. It's beautiful here, fresh water, crystal clear, in the middle, literally in the middle of Fraser Island. It's just remarkable. The sand is white and it's quite the journey to get here. No made roads where I think Tim promised me there was made roads. It was full four wheel driving. And my first comment was, I don't want to do this as soon as we headed down the road. But Everyone else was managing, so why can't we? So here we are. 
and it is amazing, beautiful, and it's cool. It's so refreshing. That refreshing. <laughs> but it's a bit like going to St Kilda Beach. Or Bondi. Mm. Keep watching for our real opinion at the end of the video. We made it back through the dingo proof gates to Kingfisher Bay. This is it. Four wheel driving. We're on this track. It's a bit lumpy, but we seem to be making progress. Hopefully we don't get bogged. Mm. We've got the tires flattened a little bit. We've dropped the pressure so that we've got a bit more grip, a bit more footprint. We seem to be going okay, and the V8 on this Land Cruise, the V8 diesel, it's got a lot of torque, and we can rip through some of the sand. So far, so good. We made it. We got through. Crazy. Good job, Tim. Good job. And so then we had a little bit of the local calming therapy. Yeah, very calming. We were good. Yeah, that's damn good. So the time had come to go off grid and go camping. Time had come. Um, and I lowered the tyre pressure down to 27 psi, but I didn't think it was enough. Uh, and before you could say Jack Robinson, we weren't going anywhere. So, we're stuck. We've just left to go to our campsite and the only road in and some poor person's broken down and of course there's a bus and all of us behind as well and there's nothing we can do but just wait and see what happens. Enjoy the scenery. <laughs> all right, status update. Mm. We're stuck here on the track. Yes. No way out, uh, no way back. There's a big tour bus behind us, four-wheel drive tour bus, about 20 cars ahead of us, and no news of what's happening down the track. I think we're in for the long haul. Yeah, well. Well, look, we've got plenty of provisions, and if we get stuck here all night, well, we'll just open up the tent on the roof and we'll be sweet. Oh, yeah, and the car in front of us, they've got the esky out, and I think they're having snacks, so maybe we'll boil the billy. See what happens in the next hour. <laughs> yeah. Wait for the update. Stay tuned. As we approached a fork in the road, we both decided to turn left on the Lake Wobby track. Lake yeah. Wobby? Lake Wobby, yeah. yeah. On the map, it was coloured orange and called Scenic Drive. Yeah, but that, it was a big mistake going down that track. <laughs> I, th I th actually thought it would be a good idea to get away from that heavy tourist traffic and a chance to sort of pull off the road a little bit and then lower the tyre pressure down to 24 psi. But it turns out locals never use this track and it's considered advanced. And we, we, we were to find that out pretty soon. <laughs> it's advanced. This has been intense, but here we are in this beautiful forested area and the track is a little bit more benign than what we've gone through. I tell you what, I didn't think we were gonna make it back there, but we're doing okay at the moment. And it's beautiful here. Look at this beautiful forest. And did we have a delay today, Tim? What's happened to our plans? Oh, yeah, we've been delayed a couple of hours, getting held up with broken down trucks on the track and whatever, but it's insane here. Parts of the track are incredibly beautiful. But around every turn were these very difficult sections. But the Land Cruiser, uh, we've just got stock suspension. Um, the only modifications we've made is we've put some beefed up recovery points and we put it the set of um, all-terrain tyres. Um, I, I reckon they really served us well here. Yeah, I reckon these tyres saved our skin many, many times. But we didn't have a UH um, radio though. So, you know, there's no Wi-Fi out there. And if you get stuck, yeah, there's really no way to communicate. Well, look, I, I admit that was pretty, pretty foolish of us not to have a, a, a radio. Uh, we had all the other gear. We had um, tracks, we had straps, we had shackles, we had shovels, <laughs> we had everything. Yeah, but absolutely. But we didn't have a radio and I don't know why we didn't. Never mind. 
But don't make the same mistake we had. You really do need something out there. At, le at least a handheld, at the very least. So the scenic drive eventually joined up to the track on Eastern Beach. Yeah, but that track, as you can see, it was just sand, deep sand all the way. We had little traction. Uh, I was panicking. Um, and we just kept the throttle going until we s were spat out in the beach. Yeah, the Land Cruiser just didn't let us down. When we thought that, oh, this is, you know, not looking good, it just kept on going. It was great. But anyway, we hit the beach and all hell broke loose because we were there at high tide mm. and we didn't expect to be there. We, sh we were delayed a couple hours and it was on. Absolutely. It's our first time driving on the beach and it was chaos. The hire car in front of us was swerving everywhere. They were having a lot of trouble as well. They were heading to the water. There was just, it was traffic and it was just a, incredible. We were like, what is going on? It was really, you know, quite unnerving. But you look at that hire car um, again, let's have a look at him again. I reckon he was about to roll. Yeah, it looked really tricky because you, you all come out at once, which sounds really bizarre, but there's only one way in and one way out and it, it just it's like it's just super busy. Not to mention the other cars that were coming up from Inskip Inskip Point. So that's another way to get onto the island and so there's people coming everywhere. So yeah, it's quite tricky. So all I could do was keep the um, pressure on the throttle and um, until we got a point to pull off and lower the tire pressure. We were booked in Camp Zone 4 and settled into a picturesque creekside spot just on the beach, just a little north of the Happy Valley General Store. Really happy with this spot. I've seen people uh, sleep on the beach on the Gold Coast and down in Frankston and now we were about to do the same thing. But pretty soon we realised that we were not going to be sharing this campsite alone. began the constant flow of traffic. I know. It was at, at high speed. Yeah, it was crazy. Now, after we set up camp, I wanted to go to the water's edge, but I had to look both ways because there was just so much traffic and they come down at such a speed, obviously, to, so they don't get bogged either. Um, but I felt it was a, it sat a little bit uncomfortable for me. I don't know about this driving on the beach. It just didn't seem the right thing to do. Look, I, I, I guess it's better than ripping up more inland tracks to, to get to places. But, you know, there are vast sections on the western side where you, you can't drive. Mm. So your turtles and plovers, they're, they're OK on that side. Yeah, it's good. It's good to know. But what was really disturbing was the condition of the campsite just right next to us. Yeah, there was toilet paper, empty tuna tins. You know, there's no requirement to have a uh, portable toilet in this area. It's just recommended. It seems crazy because we set up our porta potty in the shower tent right next to our car. There's, it's really very easy, very convenient. It's no big deal. So I don't understand why. Yeah, thankfully where we were camping, there's, there's nowhere where you could have dug a hole. Uh, so, I mean, the only place that could have gone is in the creek. What? Is that? You reckon no. That, would that be? Oh. Surely not. <laughs> right next to us. Who knows? Oh, no. Then, unfortunately, we discovered that all the backpack fish that we'd bought from Melbourne had gone off. It wasn't correctly sealed. We damn well should have done it ourselves. We had the machine at home. But this whole trip was about facing challenges mm. and overcoming problems and working together as a team. Yeah. So we had a bowl of potatoes each for, for dinner that yeah. night and we spared the eggs for breakfast. That's right. We slept like babies, all snuggled in our rooftop tent. Um, the wind was just lovely, so it was lovely, lots of fresh air, and the sound of the waves just lulled us to sleep. Yeah, but then at about 3 o'clock in the morning, bang, 
One of the stays that was holding up the fly just exploded in the constant wind pressure. Mm, so windy. I decided to climb down just in my undies, <laughs> try and rig something up to stop it from flapping around. Yeah, it's just Tim and the dingoes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Smash us a like if you think we're nuts. Indeed. Anyway, in the morning, just before 5 a.m., the first glimpses of the sunrise were just incredible. But today, we were going to try and get off this beach. Driving back at low tide was an absolute breeze and a lot more enjoyable. But I was quietly worried about having to get up that sand dune. Absolutely. Before we knew it. Putting the tyres at 24 PSI because we're off the beach. This time we went back on the right track and it was a lot easier. Yes, much. I can see the fence. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. What's happening, Tim? We're just about to escape Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay! Civilization. Yeah. We're about to see tarmac, look at this. <laughs> oh, my, oh God. my God. We escaped. Don't stop. Drive through. Oh, I've got to pump the tyres up. Oh, here? Yeah. Why? But Tim, what are your final thoughts about Fraser Island? Well, look, I think it's getting to the stage where it's a little bit overloved. Mm. I mean, we had all our permits for the four-wheel drive and for the campsites that we were booked in. But no one was checking anything. And look, I think a, a lot of people that come over to Fraser don't have the right equipment and definitely don't have the right driving skills. Absolutely. I totally agree. Do you think there should be more regulations? Well, look, I think that's a bit harsh, but I think the industry should step up and maybe introduce some sort of easy to follow qualification system. Oh, we would have benefited from that so much. And, you know, maybe some of our overseas tourist guests, you know, could, could upskill before they hit the island. Absolutely. Just so you know what you're in for. Absolutely. But I think another issue is maybe some of the influencers in this field who've done very well, maybe they can include in their messaging Leave it the way you found it. Or how about take your crap with you? Look, I think, or we think, it's, a, it's an unspoken about issue. You know, camp dumpers, really? I mean, this is where people eat and sleep and kids play. And can you leave your business around a campsite like that? So have you experienced these things at the Fraser Island campsites as well? Let us know in the comments. But Christine... Haven't had that experience in Fraser, would you want to go back? Oh, definitely. I loved Kingfisher Resort. Um, I loved the surrounds of there as well. The camping was great. I'm just not really a fan of the four-wheel drive aspect. I'd like to come back, but I think going solo like we did is not quite right. You really need a couple of cars to make it work. Um, but I want to come back with a, with a lot lighter than the heavy weight that we had. And I want to check out Yurong Beach Resort. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Let's see. I hear the sounds of your heartbeat.